Welcome to this webinar for VISTA members on using the Siegel AmeriCorps Education Award. The Education Award is one of the most significant benefits for many VISTAs. To make the most of this award, it's important to know all the ways it can be used and to understand the limitations. I'm your host, Sandy King, a training specialist for the AmeriCorps VISTA program. And now it's my pleasure to introduce today's presenter from the VISTA member support unit. Siobhan Walker is a native of Dallas, Texas, and she's an AmeriCorps and AmeriCorps VISTA alumna. Siobhan served as an AmeriCorps VISTA member in Arlington, Texas, and she joined the staff of the VISTA member support unit in 2013. Siobhan brings in-depth knowledge of the VISTA member benefits. In the chat and Q&A, you will also see Natasha Douglas from the VISTA member support unit, as well as Andy and Jessica from our partners at Education West West. You'll all work behind the scenes to help get your questions answered. So now I'm going to turn things over to Siobhan Walker. Siobhan? And Siobhan, your line might be muted. Thanks, Andy. I'm delighted to be able to discuss the Education Award benefits today. As a former VISTA, I can attest that the information shared today is very relevant as you think about how you'd like to use your Education Award. Today, we'll clarify the benefits and limitations of the Education Award, discuss the eligible uses of the award, review how to make a payment, and close with how the Education Award impacts your taxes. If during the presentation you have any questions, please write them down and we will have a Q&A at the end of the session. So let's get started. The Siegel AmeriCorps Education Award is managed by the National Service Trust, a fund that is established by the National and Community Service Act of 1993. It is used to pay for AmeriCorps Education Awards and interest that accrues on qualified student loans for those who have successfully completed a full term of national service. As mentioned at PSO, VISTAs have the option to select a $1,500 cash stipend or the Education Award. If you initially chose the Education Award but decide you'd rather elect the cash stipend, you must do so before your 10th month of service. If you selected the cash stipend in the beginning, unfortunately, it's too late for you to switch. If you decide to serve another term, however, that is something to keep in mind, and we recommend initially selecting the Education Award from the start, so you'll have more options later. Now we're going to discuss the benefits and limitations of the Education Award. As part of your VISTA benefits, you're eligible to receive a Siegel AmeriCorps Education Award if you successfully complete a 12-month term of service. The award amount for full-time members is currently $5,775. Selecting the Education Award also allows you to access some other important benefits, like the National Service Forbearance and Interest Accrual Payments. National Service Forbearance allows you to postpone payments on your federal loans during service and also have the interest that accrued on those loans paid after service. The Education Award benefit is administered completely through the My AmeriCorps Gov portal where you can make payments toward educational expenses. We're going to spend more time talking about that later on in the presentation. The Education Award does have its limits. You have seven years to use the Education Award from the date you complete your VISTA service. You can divide up your award and use portions of it at different times. You could, for example, apply a portion of it to existing qualified student loans and save the remainder to pay for authorized college costs a few years later down the road. If a member extends service, they are only eligible for the stipend during their extension period and cannot receive forbearance or interest payments for the extension period. Another limitation that VISA should be aware of is that the education award is not transferable to dependents. Finally, you should decide to, if you should decide to serve multiple terms, be aware, there is a limit on the value of education awards that an individual is allowed to receive. By law, an individual may not receive more than the aggregate or total value of two full-time education awards. 
as we've mentioned, a VISTA can only earn up to the equivalent of two educational awards in your lifetime. So let's say that you love VISTA so much you want to serve a third term. What exactly are your options? It might seem that the cash stipend is your only option. However, if you are serving for a third term, you do have the option to select a zero value education award. What this means is that you wouldn't actually get the education award funds for your third term of service, but you would be able to keep your loans into forbearance with the National Service Trust and to have the interest paid off at the end of your service term. The important thing to consider in this situation is whether having your loan interest for the year paid off by the National Service Trust could be more than the $1,500 cash stipend. So the zero value education award might save you more money than the cash stipend itself. There are multiple ways you can use the education award. The two main categories are repaying qualified student loans and paying eligible education expenses. In the next few slides, we will review each of these categories and clarify what these look like. To begin, we'll start off with the category of paying existing debt. This is a traditional use of the award that most people expect to see, and it's definitely one of the most popular. When we talk about the qualified student loans, we mean federally backed student loans that are outstanding and will need to be paid. Loans backed by or given by the federal government are loans from the U.S. Department of Education. These loans may be serviced through other companies such as Nelnet, ACS, or Fed Loan Servicing. Loans can only be consolidated through the government if there are federal loans to begin with. So private loans are excluded in all cases and cannot be used, cannot be paid using the education work. Managing student loans can be a complicated and daunting process. Today we are focused on the education award and how you can use it to make payments towards your eligible loans. If you'd like more detailed information about managing your loans or opting into different loan programs, we have a recent webinar completely devoted entirely to that topic available on the VISTA campus. All right, so we've, we've arrived to our poll question. But before we begin, we'd like to hear from you. Who do you think you can use the Education Award for? We want you to check all of the available options that you think apply. We have the option of graduate school tuition, professional development certificate tuition, cooking classes at a local community center, a new computer, rent while in school, GRE test prep course, and a selling class in Mexico. Please use this time to answer the poll question located on the right side of your screen. And again, we appreciate everyone's participation in completing this poll, and we're looking forward to reviewing and discussing the results. And there we see the uh, results. Yeah, that's great. Looks like we've had quite a bit of people answering questions here. And looks like our most popular answer is graduate school tuition. And then the next one in line would be professional development certificate tuition, as well as GRE test prep course. We did have a few in the other categories as well. All right. So I'd like to thank those of you who were able to answer um, the poll. Um, but the answer, all of these, actually the answer is that all of these expenses are potentially eligible, but there is one very important condition, and we're going to discuss that. 
all of these options were eligible education expenses as long as they're through a Title IV institution or a school authorized to receive funds from the GI Bill. You can use your education award for costs associated with attendance, including tuition and fees, supplies, and living expenses as long as it's through a Title IV institution. Title IV institutions are those that are able to accept federal student aid programs. There are over 7,000 eligible institutions, but you have lots of options. Available online, you can find the full list, and we have included that link here and in the chat. If you decide to use the Education Award to pay for tuition, you still want to consider that there are many institutions that will match your Education Award. These come in the form of matching funds, scholarships, expanded benefits, or both. One thing to note is though often these matching funds or scholarships are for specific programs or departments within a larger university, so you'll need to look carefully. For example, Carnegie Mellon University, Science College, offers a minimum scholarship of $10,000 per semester for VISTA alums. Emory University School of Public Health offers a $5,000 match when you use your education award. When combined with the education awards, the savings and benefits are incredible. Some other matching institutions include Texas A&M, University of Arizona, University of Colorado, Duke University, and many more. If you haven't looked at the list already, please do spend some time checking out all the great opportunities out there. There are lots of great options, and we'll put a link in the chat now to show that list. Beyond tuition, there are a variety of other uses the award can be put toward, and let's go ahead and explore that further. Some other great uses for the Education Award are enrichment classes, trade schools, or schools through the Veterans Administration. Enrichment classes are classes that are typically one-off and are there to serve your personal interests and development. You could take a class like guitar, swimming, photography, or anything else that's offered through an eligible community college or public university. If you take one or two classes per quarter at a community college, you can make your award last for years. We know that a traditional four-year university isn't the ideal experience for everyone, so keep in mind there are many trade schools on the Title IV list as well. Trade schools can help you delve deeper into a specialized career and gain knowledge about specific industries including flight training, culinary school, massage, and many others. Keep in mind that only Title IV schools and schools that are eligible to receive the GI Bill funds are eligible to receive the Education Award. So do some research and call their financial aid office before making any big plans. Now one question that always pops up around the Education Award is can I use the award to study in France? Or how can I travel with the award? Yes, you can use the Education Award for education expenses abroad. That could include a language class, a cooking class, or any educational opportunity you find as long as it's through the Title IV institution. To see what this might look like, let's look at an example of a VISTA alum who found a creative way to study abroad using the Education Award. And now I'm going to send things over to Andy. Andy? Thanks, Siobhan. Yep, I'm going to share the story of a VISTA alum named Rob Cox. Rob served as a VISTA member with Jumpstart in Boston. Uh, he completed his service back in 2004. As the seven-year deadline for using the Ed Award uh, started to approach, Rob was faced with finding an opportunity for using his education award in a way that would make sense for him. He didn't really want to go back to graduate school. He sort of finished his, his formal education, and he didn't have a whole lot of time. So after researching a number of options, Rob decided to use his education award to take a course with the National Outdoor Leadership School, or NOL. And I noticed before we got started, a few of you were commenting in the chat about NOL. So if you're not familiar, NOL's courses uh, take students of all ages on remote wilderness expeditions to develop leadership skills, uh, technical outdoor skills, and environmental ethics. NOLS itself is not an eligible institution for using the education award. But fortunately, Knowles has developed agreements with two other institutions that are Title IV institutions. So if you are interested in attending a Knowles course and using your education award, you would need to apply to both Knowles 
for the program that you wanted to attend and to one of the Title IV schools. And then you would use the Ed Award uh, to pay the tuition at the Title IV school uh, to cover your NOL tuition and equipment deposit. So Bob took a course called Baja Coastal Sailing that contrasts the ocean and desert environment in, uh, off the coast of Mexico. He spent 21 days in the field around the Gulf of California near the desert environment of Baja, Mexico, learning the technical aspects of sailing, uh, including things like navigation, wind and wave theory, meteorology, uh, along with learning to survive the extremes of a desert environment. So why did Rob pick Knowles? Well, he had a limited time frame for using the education award. His seven-year expiration date was approaching, and he wasn't interested in taking a regular university class. He was also looking for the type of learning that happens outside of a traditional classroom. By doing some research, he was able to find an opportunity that fit his interests and allowed him to use his education award. For more information about outdoor and international travel options uh, using your education board, check out the link uh, that Jeff is going to post in the chat in just a second. Uh, now Siobhan's going to take a look at how you can use the education board for educational expenses beyond tuition. Siobhan? All right. Thanks, Andy. You can use the education award to pay for supplies and living expenses needed to attend school. This includes books, school supplies, equipment, as well as food and rent. However, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, using the award to pay for these things does take planning and organization on your part. Any expense that you would like to use for the education award must be directly attributable to a class you're taking. Your institution can't just add a laptop to your cost of attendance just because you want one. The laptop must be a requirement for the class that you're taking. The same goes for other expenses like books, specialty supplies, and equipment. Any expense outside of tuition must be connected to a class that you're taking in order to use the education award. Second, your education award balance is not like a bank account where you can draw cash from it to buy things. Funds are never sent directly to you. Instead, funds are sent to the institution, and then you are reimbursed through your institution. Where this can get complicated is that every school's financial aid office may operate a little bit differently. So you need to, as a first step, get acquainted with your financial aid counselor and really read up on the rules and regulations for the education award. Let's walk through a hypothetical example and talk about how this works. Here's a step-by-step -step look at how it might work if you needed a laptop for class and wanted to use the education award. Again, that laptop must be attributable to a specific class you're taking. Your institution has to prove that a class you're taking is impossible to do without a computer. For example, an advanced computer class may require a laptop, and the institution must prove that the cost is directly related to the class. First, you would work with a financial aid counselor to make sure that all expenses qualify for payment using the education award. Then together, you would estimate your total expenses for the term. Second, using My MyAmeriCorps, make an education award payment request to your institution in the amount you and your financial aid counselor worked out. Then you should be able to receive your approved expense added into your financial aid disbursement for the term. Let's break that down even further. For example, let's say your tuition, fees, and books are $6,000 for a semester. You also need to purchase a laptop for a computer science class at $1,000. Your financial aid package is only for $5,000, so to cover the rest of your education expenses, you'd like to use the education award. To do this, you must first speak to a financial aid counselor, get the laptop expense approved for your class, and then using the My AmeriCorps portal, send a payment request for $2,000 to your institution. That way, you cover the remaining $1,000 of your tuition fees and books, and then have $1,000 available as part of your financial aid package to cover the cost of the laptop. This can be a tricky thing to navigate, so let's make sure you are well-versed in the education award when you go to speak to your financial aid counselor. Now we're going to discuss how to go about making payments. 
You start the process of using your education award through the MyAmericorps.gov portal. Once you've completed your term of service, you will be able to access a link from your home screen to create an education award payment request. You will, you will have an access to a form where you will need to enter the payment type, the amount authorized, and then the institution where the payment will be directed. When you click on Submit, a notice will be electronically sent to your educational or loan institution. A record of your request will appear in your account homepage. The school or loan holder will complete their portion of the form and return it electronically to CNCS, which is the Corporation for National Community Service. They will fill in the amount for which you are eligible if the request is for current educational expenses, or they will provide the payoff amount and loan type if the request is for a student loan. Once you initiate a request, the payment generally takes about 48 hours. Note, this process cannot be automated, so you will need to create a request for each payment that you wish to make. If for some reason the institution denies the request for payment, they should have entered comments explaining the reason for the denial. Now we're going to pause and check in about tax liability. Andy, can you start us off? Sure thing, Siobhan. Uh, before we jump to everyone's favorite topic, let's see how well-versed you are on the subject of taxes. We have a couple of poll questions that now appear on the right side of your screen. Uh, so if you would take a moment to tell us about how knowledgeable you think you are in the subject of taxes, and then answer the questionnaire about the taxability of the education award and interest accrual payment. Uh, I'll just mention that your responses are anonymous, so feel free to answer them honestly. Um, and so we're interested to see how knowledgeable you think you are about the subject of taxes. Um, and if you are knowledgeable, I may call you up for some help. Uh, just kidding. Um, and then to see what you might know about the taxability of benefits related to the education award. So while you're answering the poll questions, I'll add that they're gener people generally don't like to have to figure out their own taxes. It's certainly one of those areas where it really pays literally uh, to do a little bit of research. Uh, taxes are an area where a little knowledge can go a long way. And so you may want to make some notes and put them someplace where you'll be able to find them when you sit down to do your taxes. Um, so the poll is ended. It will take just a second for those results to compile. And here they are. Uh, so it looks like we don't really have any, maybe one expert on the session. Um, and most people are at the bottom of the scale where it says, eh, I know a little, or oh, I really don't want to know anything. But that's pretty typical and, and sort of what we expected. Uh, then the actual quiz question, which, if any, of the benefits are taxable? Um, uh, it looks like a few of you said uh, that the award would be taxable uh, in the year that <clears throat> sorry in the year that you uh, receive it when you finish your vista term. Uh, a lot more of you said that it would be taxable when you use it, uh, which is actually correct. Um, so almost a hundred of you correctly identified that the interest. Uh, uh, wait a minute, uh, that the interest accrual payment is taxable in the year you finish your risk of service. And uh, I'm sorry to say that actually we had a little bit of a glitch with our, um, uh, our thing, and I can't see the, uh, the percentages. But some of you said that uh, none of the above, which is, which is not correct. But there are two, two of these answers uh, are correct. So the education award is taxable in the year that you spend it or use it, and interest accrual payment is taxable at the time you receive it, which is right at the end of your risk of service. Um, so it looks like some of you don't know maybe as much about taxes as you might, um, so hopefully I'll be able to provide a little bit of information that will be useful during this webinar. Um, a good number of you did identify correctly that um, the education award is taxable and the interest is taxable. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that um, so that you all can understand how that works. Um, we know that the topic of taxes 
generally raises a lot of questions. So I'm going to cover some basic information here. Um, but, uh, and, and to do that, just so that you're not surprised by the fact that these are taxable benefits. Um, and as we move through this section, please remember that uh, we're approaching the topic of taxes specifically as it relates to the education wars. And we won't be able to address questions about taxes in general. And having said that, I am not a tax professional nor an accountant, so I cannot give you tax advice. Um, but I can provide you with general information um, about how these benefits are taxed. Okay. So the first big piece of information to take away is that any amount of the education award that you spend or that you use is considered income that is taxable. You will be taxed on the amount that was used for the tax year when you used it. This means, though, that if a year goes by and you do not use any of your education awards, then you don't have to pay any taxes on it for that year. Your education award is only taxed as you use it. Unlike payroll, where federal taxes are withheld at the time you receive um, your, your pay stub or your check, uh, the education award amount you elect to use is paid in full to the lender or the school. But when you do your taxes the following January, you will need to add the amount of education award that you spent or that you sent to the school or to the lender um, and add that to your taxable income. Now, I saw that in the chat before we got started, some folks were talking about, you know, is it taxable or, you know, if you use just a little bit of it, it won't be taxable. That's not true. Any amount of the education award that you use or spend is taxable income. If you use $600 or more of the education award in any given year, then you will get a 1099 miscellaneous form, and that will post to your account in My AmeriCorps. Uh, by January 31st uh, for each year that you uh, use some of the education awards. And if you get one of those 1099 miscellaneous forms, you need to include that when you file your tax return. If you use less than $600 of your ad award, you still need to report the amount as taxable income, uh, but there won't be a 1099 miscellaneous form uh, for you to attach. So let's pause for a moment and consider tax liability. <clears throat> this is tend to have a lot of questions about tax liability, and we understand that folks would like a specific estimate for their own individual tax liability when using the education board. So I want to clarify why it's actually not possible for me to give you all one standard universal estimate that will apply to all of you. And that, of course, is because tax liability depends on a number of personal and situational factors. What I can show you is a list of those factors that impact your tax liability so you can make your own estimate. As a general rule, your tax liability will always be tied to your income during a given year. The education award, that is any amount of it that you spend, is considered income for that year when you spend it. And it'll be added to whatever your annual income is for that year. So for a given year that you use all or part of your education award, what you owe in taxes will be dependent on the five factors listed here. First, your total annual income during the year during which you use some of your education award. Number two, the amount of the education award that you actually use or spent. Number three, any tax credits or deductions which reduce your taxable income, the federal tax rate that applies to you based on uh, your situation. And number five, the state tax rate um, that applies to you uh, for the state where you earned your income. So your total annual income plus the amount of that reward that you use minus the tax credit and deductions based on your personal circumstances gets you to a total taxable income. That total taxable amount then gets taxed at the federal rate 
and at the state rate where you earned your income. These are just the most basic factors, but as you can see, there are many unknown variables going on. So let's take a look at how this might play out in some hypothetical situations. Let's start with some scenarios for a hypothetical VISTA who just finished service in 2015. So let's say this VISTA had $10,000 of income for 2015. And uh, in the first version uh, of this scenario, the VISTA alum used $500 of the education award that year. In the second version, they used their entire award, so $57.75. In both cases, the VISTA had about $8,000 in credits and deductions, but as you can see, the added income from using the entire education board increased the overall taxable income for that VISTA member. It's a hypothetical example, but you can see how important it is to be aware of how much of the education board you're using relative to your other income in a given year. In this example, uh, this in, in the second case had a higher taxable income than the other one, but both would be taxed at the same federal tax rate, here 10%. However, let's see how this might look uh, after a few years when the VISTA has a higher income level. So let's say it's been a few years uh, since the VISTA completed service. And this alum is now making $40,000 at a job where they are still paying taxes uh, throughout the year. The alum decides to use their entire education award during that year, the full 5775, which then gets added to taxable income for that year. The total income is now $45,775. And after subtracting the credits and deductions, you can see that the taxable income is $37,775. And that that amount actually brought the VISTA into a higher tax bracket. So they have more taxes to pay. Again, it depends on your own personal uh, situation and uh, factors to help you decide when you want to use the education board and how much of it you want to use in a particular year. As a lower income versus higher income, you can part of the education award or the full amount. So as I said, and as you could see from those examples, taxes are complicated and they're personal. But there is a way that you can estimate your own tax liability, and that is to download a recent 1040 form, or actually right now, um, since we're just about uh, to be doing our taxes for 2015, you can get the current uh, 1040 form and estimate filling it out with uh, the most recent tax rate and your estimated income for the coming year. When making a decision about using your education ward, we suggest you first test the out to plan for your tax liability. Of course, the 1040 uh, IRS tax form comes with instructions in the irs.gov website has uh, many added resources to get you started. Though your education award is taxed in the year you use it, there are other ways to reduce your tax liability for educational expenses. There are multiple federal income tax credit programs for those who have current education expenses. So if you're currently taking college courses, or if you plan to in the future, you'll want to look at both of these credits. Though not administered or associated with AmeriCorps, these programs can help save you money in the future if you're going back to school. You can visit the IRS website to learn more about these credits, as well as connect with an interactive tax assistance tool to help you determine if you're eligible. Now let's talk about a few resources. When it comes time to filling out your tax return, there are lots of different programs available online and in person that can help. For those with an income of less than $53,000, 
and that I'm sure includes just about every single VISTA member, you can receive free in-person tax preparation through a program called VITA, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Often organizations that run VITA tax prep sites can also assist you with resource sharing and making sure that you get your tax questions answered. If you want a quick and efficient way to file your taxes, free file is a great online option to consider. Essentially, many well-known tax preparers like TurboTax and H&R Block have three versions of their software available for those with household income of less than $62,000. So again, I think most VISTAs will be able to use one of the free file providers. Now, each of the individual companies that are part of the free file alliance have different threshold amounts um, for uh, who can use their, their free software. But if you're under the $62,000 income limit, there will be at least one uh, software package that you can use for free. Uh, to use it, click on the free file logo, which is on the IRS website, enter some basic information, and you'll see free file service providers that you can choose from. You'll be directed to the provider's website to complete your tax return online and submit it to the IRS, and possibly to your state's office of taxation. We'll drop a link in the chat to the different programs uh, available for the IRS. If you have specific questions about your taxes, we suggest you connect directly with someone from the IRS or with a tax professional. We realize that this is an important topic for VISTAs, um, so please be aware that we at the VISTA program um, are not tax experts and we're not qualified to give you personal tax advice. There are several ways that you can connect with the IRS to ask tax questions. Uh, first of all, the irs.gov website has a help and resources section. There are a number of FAQs to get you started. If you want to speak with someone directly, uh, whether in person or on the phone, there's a link to find a local IRS office or a taxpayer assistance center in the context of section of their website. Of course, these resources that I've mentioned are mostly specific to federal taxes. If you have questions about the state income tax, my best advice is to look up your state's Department of Revenue and contact them directly. And now I'm going to turn things back over to Siobhan um, to wrap us up. Siobhan? Thanks, Andy. To make sure you all can use, make use of this information in the long run, CNCS has an, edu an online educational work site for you to take advantage of, and I strongly recommend you at least browse the site. The site is divided into two main areas, stories, which illustrate many ways to use education awards, and a guidebook that organizes, organizes the information by topic. There are seven, seven different stories that illustrate different situations where an AmeriCorps member is deciding how best to use education awards or ways to manage the student loan. Each story comes with one or more short animated videos and links to additional information. So as we begin to wrap up, we'd love to hear from you. Did you find any new ways to use education awards? Did you change your mind about how you plan to use it? I want you all to uh, take the time to uh, answer this question in your chat. So it looks like folks have gotten new ideas about how to use the Education Award for enrichment classes or language classes. Um, some of them are just uh, giving a resounding yes. Um, it looks like we've also generated some questions for folks as well, and we'll be getting to the question section in just a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, so uh, to sum up, there are lots of ways that the education award can be used. That's the beauty of it, that it is so flexible and that it can be used in so many different ways. But of course, because of that flexibility, it means there's a lot of information to be learned, a lot of details to know, and so that's 
of our goals here. Um, and as Siobhan just mentioned, the Education Award website can give you a lot more detail than we can cover here uh, about specific uses of the Education Award. All right. Thanks, Andy. So now we're going to talk about some more additional steps that you can use as a follow-up to this session. Explore the Education Award website. Make sure you're well informed about all the different ways you can use the award. Explore the list of Title IV institutions and see what's out there. Explore schools and programs that match the Education Award. You may discover programs and scholarships you never considered before that can increase your benefit. Down the line, once you have decided how to use the award, consider speaking to a financial aid counselor if you plan to use it for the cost of attendance. Finally, whether you plan to use it for repaying loans or for future ex education expenses, it's a great idea to estimate your tax burden in advance. Thank you all for your participation. We're now going to get ready for our Q&A session. Now back to you, Andy. Thanks, Siobhan. Um, and uh, before we jump into the Q&A session, I do want to point out that we love to get your feedback and input about uh, uh, the webinars that we offer. So we've just opened a poll on the right side of your screen. There's a little slider bar you'll need to slide down um, to get to the 10 quick questions. Uh, so if you would take a moment to um, respond to those questions while we're getting started. Uh, we'd love to hear what you thought about this session today and ideas you might have for the future. Um, but now, of course, we do want to get to your questions. And um, we have a large audience for this session, so I want to just give you a warning. We may not be able to get to every single question, but we're going to do our best. And we'll focus on questions that will likely be of interest to other members of the audience. And if you have a question or if we see a question that gets into a lot of personal details, we're going to refer you to the National Service Hotline so that you can get an answer that's tailored to your specific situation. Um, as mentioned earlier, you can ask your questions using the Q&A panel, which is located in the lower right of your screen. Because we opened the poll, that, box, that panel has collapsed. So we just click the um, triangle next to the word or the letters Q&A, and that will open up the Q&A panel. Now I'm going to ask our operator, Aaron, to give us instructions for how to ask a question by phone. Aaron? If you would like to ask a question on the audio, please press star and then one on your touchtone phone. You will then need to unmute your phone and record your name. So again, that's star and then one on your touchtone phone. And your name is required in order to introduce your question. And it will take just a few moments for any audio questions to queue. Great. And while we're waiting for questions to come on the phone, we have plenty of them already lined up in the WebEx Q&A. So we'll get started. Uh, first, David asks, can the award be dispersed over time to cover monthly student loan payments? So, Siobhan? And Siobhan, your phone may have diverted uh, back I'm to I'm sorry, again. Andy. Could you repeat that question one more time? Sure. Uh, can the education award be dispersed over time to cover monthly student loan payments? And okay. how would I do that? Okay. Yes. Um, for Depending on, say, for instance, you're, you know, you're going to be attending classes um, soon, or um, like there's just many ways to do it. So if you already have expenses, you know, student loan expenses, what you'll do, you'll log into the My AmeriCorps portal, and you'll have to set up those payments. So you can use just, you know, whatever amount. If it's, you know, you're paying $500 on something, and but you have to constantly log into the My AmeriCorps portal to make those payments. It won't automatically do it. Um, but you can definitely, um, for whatever amount you're trying to pay, you can definitely set those payments up through the My Miracle portal. So that that's definitely a yes. Um, just you know, keep in mind, you know, when you want to set these things up and make sure that you have the balance to do so. Perfect. Uh, the next question I think is for me. Kenya says, how do we avoid getting taxed while using the education board? Well, as we just saw, the education award is a taxable income, so it may not be possible to avoid taxes altogether, um, but you can certainly use some strategies to minimize the tax, uh, the amount that you get taxed on it, 
by using it um, in amounts and spreading it out over time so that it doesn't uh, move you into a higher tax bracket. Uh, so typically, years when your income is lower, that's generally a good time um, to use the education board because your tax burden uh, would be less than it would be in a year when you're making a lot more. Of course, you have to be prepared to pay the tax um, that year, but if it's, you know, uh, if say you're in a 10% tax bracket and you use $1,000 of the education award, well, yeah, then you have to be prepared to spend uh, $100 uh, to pay the tax on that. So it is a consideration, um, but unfortunately, uh, taxes cannot be avoided altogether. Uh, next up, Siobhan Melissa says, is the seven-year limit on using the education award the same for all AmeriCorps programs? I did state national last year, and I thought it was only five years. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'm not too familiar with the other programs, but I do know for this, and that is our uh, that is our timeline. Um, but I, yeah, yeah, I really and I'm and I'm pretty sure that uh, that the the terms for the uh, the education award are are standard across, with the one exception of transferability, um, but uh, the seven-year limit, uh, my understanding is that that applies to all AmeriCorps programs, um, and the only difference is that uh, VISTA members are not able to transfer the education award to anyone else, um, whereas other uh, AmeriCorps members do have the transfer option. Okay, next up, uh, Hannah says, if I can show that I use certain books for my uh, master's thesis in conjunction with the thesis course, would I be able to purchase them using the education award? And what would I need to provide for proof? That's a great question. Um, as we discussed in the presentation, and you definitely want to speak with your financial aid counselor and explain what's needed and the you know how how you can go about basically making sure that the, that is an attributable cost, you know, having to buy the books in order to complete your course. But you definitely need to talk to your financial aid counselor about about that situation to see because um, it just it depends. Okay, great advice. So now let's turn to the phones and see, Erin, do we have any callers on the line? I'm currently showing no questions on the audio. Okay. No worries, we've got plenty of them queued up here. Uh, next up, we've had several questions about the GRE, the graduate record exam. So, uh, so let's dive in there. Uh, so uh, several of you asked, can the education award be used for taking the GRE? That's a good question. I, I can't locate where that's actually paid for that way. Um, however, there are different resources out there. I would just do some research on that one. Um, yeah, because I can't locate anything that says that it will be paid, but definitely try to explore some resources online to see if, if that is possible. But I can't tell you from this point. That yeah, and, and Siobhan, I don't believe that the, uh, the education board can be used for the GRE exam itself. Um, uh, and there were other questions about practice exams or other types of certification exams. And I, and I think that's true across the board, that uh, certification exams and um, entrance exams uh, that do have the, uh, they're not eligible uh, to use the education or to pay for the exam itself. However, if there's a, a preparation course that's offered, you know, a, a GRE prep course or something else, that's offered through a Title IV institution, um, then you could most likely use the Ed Award to pay for the, the prep course. Now, on the GRE, there are uh, ways to get uh, discounted um, fees for the GRE, and uh, there's information about that on the Education Board website. Uh, and certainly, AmeriCorps members often are able to get a discounted uh, or sometimes even a, a waived exam fee, but more typically discounted. Uh, however, there's a limit to the number of discounted um, exams that are available. So you're going to want to look into it. 
um, to find out where you go and how you would do that through the particular institution where you'll be applying. And, um, and just be aware that, <clears throat> again, there, there could be a limited number of, of discounted exams available. So Ashley asked the question, she says, what about leftover tuition at your institution from past attendance? Uh, and so I'm guessing she has maybe an outstanding tuition bill uh, from the, uh, the university that has not yet been paid. She asked, uh, does the award apply to that? That's a tricky question. Um, now, I'm not sure if we're able to get the answer, but for the member, if she's planning on enrolling for the next term, I'm not sure if she's just completely done with school and she has that balance or if she's going to be enrolling again but just needs to clear that balance out, you know, before she can register for classes. I would talk with the financial aid office if, say, for instance, she is trying to continue on with school and just has a balance and see if they're able to pack that on to where, you know, to see how maybe that could be paid off. But I, I don't want to say yes or no to that because I'm, I'm not sure. I would talk with your financial aid office to see if that's possible. Yeah, I think that that could be a tricky thing. Um, the good advice there, um, there often are, are, you know, some clever ways to, uh, for that financial aid offices can, um, you know, can maybe bundle costs or things like that. That would allow the education award to be paid for that. <clears throat> um, okay, let's move on here. Um, sorry, I lost the plate. Uh, oh, Marquez has a question. Would you have to provide a receipt after you get reimbursed for the laptop? Ah, huh. that's a good question. I believe, I know the universities, they have uh, relationships with, you know, the corporation. So whichever way they go about, you know, proving that you need the the laptop for your course, I would Again, I would talk with the financial aid counselor to see what they need, um, just because all schools are different and the requirements are different. But it doesn't, you know, for whatever class they may be taking and need the laptop, it does need to be attributable to the class and definitely is a needed thing. So you need to talk to the financial aid counselor and see see what they require from you to to get that authorized. I would talk with them. Right, yeah, and I'm sure the, those requirements will vary from institution to institution. They'll, you know, each have made their own form or, or paperwork. Um, but needless to say, there is a requirement that you, in fact, use the money for the, the uh, you know, if it was required books or required laptop or whatever, um, that you do have to show that, in fact, you use um, the funds for that. So. Um, so we can't we can't say for any institution the details. All right, next Jordan has a question about uh, the uh, interest accrual payment. Um, so there's a lot of background, so uh, I'm going to read through it, and uh, there's a lot to consider here. All right, so Jordan says, the federal student loans are in forbearance. Uh, AmeriCorps will only allow us to submit an interest accrual payment request after our service has ended. Fed Loan Servicing says, you will receive an interest notice 20 days before the end of your forbearance, advising of the total amount of outstanding interest. Any interest that you do not pay will capitalize when the forbearance ends. Would uh, AmeriCorps pay that full amount of interest in the 20-day notice point before my service is over? Because otherwise, I will have to pay it myself because it will capitalize the day after my service and forbearance ends. So what can we share about um, interest accrual payments? It's my understanding that CNCS will pay after you've ended service. Um, I'm not aware of any circumstances where they pay before you end service because there's, if, you know, there's no guarantee you may f complete your service, so we wouldn't pay ahead of time for that. Um, I mean, I would talk. I, I would talk to your loan lender to see, you know, if there's any way they can work with you with that. Um, because again, 
you know, for CNCS, they, they pay normally at the end of your service, you know, once you request it online. Sure yeah, and, and I would find out, too, what, um, you know, what the implications are of the interest capitalizing, because if it's paid off, you know, say within 15 or 30 days of completing service, um, you know, is there a, a long-term implication from that interest having, quote, unquote, capitalized at the end of, uh, of your forbearance period? So, some questions there, it sounds like, for the lender um, or uh, federal and service thing. Uh, so now another question for me from Melinda. Uh, she says, so the education award is taxable no matter what, but don't have to claim it over $600? Um, so no, let me, uh, let me just repeat. The, um, any amount of the education award that you use is taxable income and you need to report it on your income tax return when you do your taxes for that year in which you spent or used part of the education award. If, if the amount is uh, less than $600 in the a line or other taxable income, you would put whatever the amount is, say $500, but you won't have a form to attach. You won't have a 1099 miscellaneous that you have to attach to your, um, to your tax return. If the amount is $600 or more, then you would still enter that amount on the other taxable income line, and you would have the 1099 miscellaneous form that you do have to attach. In any case, uh, any amount, we report it, or really it's the National Service Trust, report uh, that amount to the IRS. So they know that you've received that income, um, so there's no escaping the tax because of the $600 amount. It's just that for small amounts, it's sort of like with your savings account or, you know, any interest-bearing account, if you earn uh, less than a certain amount of interest, you don't get a form from you know, the bank, but you still have to claim that interest as taxable income. All right, so let's go back to the phones and, and see, Erin, if we have any callers in line. I do have one caller that has queued up. Delaney Halton, your line is open. Hi, Delaney. Are Hi, thanks for taking my call. Okay, what's your question? Are there any medical schools that offer the matches? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and uh, I don't know. I mean, there are certainly universities on the matching list uh, that have medical schools, um, but I don't know enough about um, you know, medical school, medical colleges to know if their um, tuition is, is somehow handled separately from other university tuition. Um, but I would definitely look at the list of matching schools and see if um, there are ones that you recognize, you know, if, if places you might be interested in going for med school. And then I would just contact them to see if the Ed Award can be used for medical school tuition. Um, Siobhan, have you encountered this question before? No, that's a that's a very good question. I have not encountered, but I, I agree with you, uh, Andy. Definitely, um, you know, look at the list, and if there's are there are some that you're interested in, and you know, have kind of checked out a little bit before, and contact them to see if they they you know where you can use the education award for that. But I haven't I have not received a question like that before. Uh -huh. All right, well, thanks so much for your question. Thanks. You're welcome. I show no other questions in queue for the audio currently. Okay, great. Um, well, if you do have a question, um, you'll recall to press star one on your touchstone phone, make sure your line is unmuted, record your name, and then we will call on you. Uh, meanwhile, we'll go back to the Q&A list here. Uh, Jan Marie from uh, Puerto Rico says, Puerto Rico doesn't pay federal taxes, so how does it work for us? Well, uh, in that case, uh, you're really lucky because then your education award would not be a uh, taxable benefit. So um, you can spend the education award, um, and assuming you're using it in Puerto Rico, and uh, the year you use it, uh, you 
Um, you wouldn't have to worry about that for federal uh, income tax. But, of course, you would have to uh, check with um, the Puerto Rico Department of Taxation to see if territorial taxes um, would be due. And, of course, you'd be responsible for paying those taxes with your, with your other taxes for the year. Next up, Kyle says, I'm in my second term as a VISTA member. I've not yet requested an interest payment for my loans on my first year, as I was planning on requesting for both years at the end of my second term. Will I be able to do this, or do I need to request the interest payment separately? So, Siobhan? That's a good question. I'm wondering, did you re-enroll? Like, did you re-enroll for a second term of service, or maybe took a break? Um, but I know typically you would ask for that accrual, I mean, accrual payment right after service. Um, I'm not sure if you're able to do that. I know, you know, for your current term, I'm not sure about you going back. I guess it's like retroactive going back to the, the other term of service you had, depending on how long ago it was. Um, yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, yeah, so I guess it gets down to, you know, is there a time limit um, yeah, for making exactly. for requesting the interest rule payment? Because either way, uh, I think in my AmeriCorps, you would have to request the interest accrual separately for the two terms of service because you have to select the term of service. Yes, like you can't just combine them like that. Yeah, yeah. So um, the question would be, is there a time limit um, for making that request? Uh, and I don't know. I have not encountered that. That's a very good question, and we may have to be able to try to look, get more information and try to get that back to you. But that's definitely a very good question um, about time limits. Great. So, Kyle, and, and I'll put this out for all of you. Um, if you have specific questions like this that um, maybe we need a little bit more information um, or we're not able to answer directly here, um, you'll want to contact the VISTA Member Support Unit. And, of course, you'll do that by calling the National Service Hotline at 1-800-942-2677. Um, and uh, let's go on to our next question. <clears throat> Uh, that is, uh, if my graduate degree that I'm pursuing is all online, would that qualify me to spend some of my education award on a computer? With that said, are there certain computers that I can buy over others? Um, so again, it's that question of uh, is the computer required for the course, and you'd have to work with your uh, financial aid officer to get the documentation around that and find out what the um, the parameters and limitations are around the type of computer that you could buy. Anything that you would add to that, Siobhan? No, I, def I definitely agree. And just from listening, since it's an online school, online class, um, definitely sound. It sounds to the naked eye like, yeah, you definitely need a computer to do it online. But I, like you said, definitely want to talk to the financial aid counselor and, and get the specifics and on what to buy and and, and all those things. So. Make sure everything is in line. All right. Uh, next up, Emma asks, do you know of any VISTAs who have used their education or to pay for a yoga teacher certification? Well, I don't personally know of any. Um, Siobhan, do you? No, but it sounds very relaxing. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know of any. Um, again, just a little bit more research on that. I can't think of any. Um, but that definitely sounds interesting, as long as it's a Title IV institution providing it. Um, but, yeah, maybe a little bit more research is needed with that. Great. And next, Elizabeth says uh, sort of what we were just talking about. Is the interest accrual payment um, automatically paid, or is there a process to go through? So do you just want to quickly walk through the steps again on requesting an interest accrual payment? Yeah, sure. So definitely what you'll have to do is to log on to your My AmeriCorps portal, and you will need to uh, click on your education award link on your member homepage, and you'll need to request the interest accrual payment on there. Um, and that, that site actually tracks everything. So every, you know, uh, every request um, will show on there, but you'll, you'll need to start there first. 
Okay, great. Uh, Shauna asked the question, um, is the education board considered unearned income when filing taxes? And um, that question comes to me, and as I said, I'm not a tax expert. Um, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, my guess is it, it may fall into that category, um, but, uh, but like I said, I'm not, you know, we're not qualified tax experts, so if it makes a difference for your tax filing, you're going to want to either check the, um, the instructions uh, with the tax form you file, check the FAQs at the IRS.gov website, or get in touch with them um, or one of the tax preparation specialists. Great. That's definitely a great question. Okay. So <clears throat> um, Sarah has a question that goes back uh, to the early part of the presentation, Siobhan, when you were talking about extending a term of service for maybe a, a couple of months. So she says, uh, can you say more about what is that extension um, where um, you cannot earn an education award? Okay. I definitely can uh, repeat that. So say, for instance, you're in a service term right now. You started a year ago, and you're about to end, and you decide, you know what, I love this so much, I want to extend my service for less than a year. Because um, that's what extensions are. They're less than 365 days. Um, so you are going to, of course, fill out your future plans form on the My AmeriCorps um, portal website, and you know, you'll request to, uh, to extend, say for instance, you want to extend for three months. Um, now, in your prior service term, you chose, let's say you chose the education award. So for the extension, there, on the future plans form, it's going to ask uh, what kind of end-of-service benefits that you, you know you, that you have to receive. Now, in the extension period, you cannot receive an education award. I mean, it's a very short period of time. It's less than a year. Um, and so you'll only be able to receive a uh, stipend during that time. So, you know, you'll have to select that on your future plans form, and the VMSU will process that. But just to reiterate, um, under extension periods, it's, it's less than a year. But, you know, it could go for like three to six months or nine months. It's, it's gen generally less than a year. So you can only receive an end-of-service stipend during that time period. So if you serve from, you know, extra three months outside of that year you already served, during that time period you're only getting the end-of-service stipend during that time. Great. Yeah, and I'll just add to that that, that typically a uh, VISTA member uh, extends their service term, you know, by a couple of months, not so much because they love VISTA, although, of course, they do love VISTA, but more typically, it's um, something to do with the project that, um, you know, they're uh, nearly finished with uh, a big element of the project, and if they just had another month or two, they could wrap that up. Uh, there's a big event coming up that um, just happens to be right after their typical start date. Maybe it's the big fundraiser that, or the launch of the program that they've been working on, or it's the uh, graduation um, for all the tutoring participants, whatever it is. Um, so there's usually a programmatic reason, and the, um, uh, and the sponsor, the supervisor, would, of course, have to um, also agree that it makes sense for the VISTA member to extend for that amount of time. Uh, okay. So let's see, Jessica has a question um, back to the interest accrual payment. She says, is the interest that is paid uh, interest on all federal loans, including ones that were taken out during the term of service, or just the ones that are in forbearance? From my understanding, that's just for the ones that are in forbearance. Um, the, I, I'm thinking that's, well, yeah, it depends on when you place the loans in the forbearance. Sounds like you may not have did it right away, um, but I, from my understanding, for for those uh, the interest that accrued while it was in forbearance. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. That it's only uh, loans that you've placed into national service forbearance, and only for the term that they were in forbearance. So, you know, let's say. Um, you know, it took a few months before you decided to put them in forbearance and you only had them in for, say, six or eight months. Well, only the interest for that six or eight months would get paid 
um, by the trust. Uh, Rachel has a question about matching uh, uh, schools that match the education award. She says, do they tend to match two education awards if you've done a second year of service? Mm, that's a good question. I know there's several schools that have different um, different matching and, and different information like on what they'll accept. Um, I would contact the schools of your um, that you're interested in and, and let them know that you have two education awards and you know to see what they I guess what they can do to, to max match that. Um, but yeah, definitely contact the schools and their financial aid office and see what they're able to do. Because yes, it's such a specific question, I wouldn't be able to, to really answer that. It just depends. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good point, Siobhan, That um, you know that all of the matching is completely voluntary on part of the schools and universities, and they can set the terms. Like some of them will say, well, we'll match it only up to a certain amount, like up to $5,000. Or some schools will say, well, we'll match it two to one. So if you have $5,000, we'll give you $2,500. Um, so there, there are limitations that some schools have placed. So you'll, you'll definitely want to talk to the individual uh, institution to find out about their matching. Okay, so a couple other uh, interest accrual payment questions that we've already answered. <clears throat> okay, so Hannah has a question about taxes. She says, I don't understand how spreading out paying back my loans will decrease my taxes. If using the full amount will not bump me to a higher tax bracket, I'm inclined to use it all at once to significantly lower my loan debt. Am I missing something? Well, you're not, Hannah. You're, you're absolutely right. As long as the, uh, the education award uh, amount that you spend doesn't bump you into a higher tax bracket, uh, it doesn't necessarily raise your tax burden more than it would be if you, say, made two smaller payments spread out over two years. A couple things to consider, though. Do you have the cash on hand um, in this year that you're going to spend it so that you can pay the tax when the tax comes due in April? If you don't have the cash on hand, then you might not want to spend it because then you'll be in trouble with the IRS. Um, and the other is uh, to find out um, based on your income after you finish service, uh, is there a way that you could continue to um, lower your loan repayment, uh, monthly payment? So if, say, you finish VISTA and you're, you don't have a job right away, so your income is zero, or, or maybe you're just doing some temp work, or, or you go into a entry-level nonprofit position where your salary is not very high, you still may want to um, be utilizing a program like income-based repayment to keep your payment level low while your income is low. You could certainly use the education award then um, to make those monthly payments, um, but just uh, be aware that there are ways that you can combine uh, using the education award with other programs um, to get your uh, debt burden paid down, um, but also to, um, to minimize the tax liability. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So Kathy says, I'm a VISTA first year. I opted for the cash stipend. Will this be on a W-2 or a 1099 miscellaneous in uh, January for the 2015 tax year? And the answer is yes. Um, so when you uh, finish, uh, well, uh, I don't know if it'll be for 2015. If you're still in service, then um, you, it won't appear until you finish. So that would be in 2016. Um, and when you get your uh, your W-2 or your 1099 form, uh, that uh, cash stipend for your end of service will appear as taxable. Uh, is that right, Siobhan? Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. 
Um, yeah, she if she's still in service right now, so she's ending sometime this year. Yeah, so it'll just show up on the the next W two. Yeah. Any other thing to know about the uh, the cash stipend is that um, because it's paid directly by us, uh, you know, through direct deposit, we do withhold uh, federal income tax withholding just like we do on your uh, biweekly living allowance payment. So, um, so that even though it's fifteen hundred dollars, you'll see that there's been some withholding based on um, the withholding rate that you listed in. Your W four form. Ah, okay. So Andy has a question about uh, matching institutions, and uh, he says the amounts listed for matching institutions like Carnegie Mellon are they on top of the education award or in addition to the education award? And I'm not quite sure I understand the distinction. Um, but Siobhan, do you want us to talk a little bit more about the matching? Um, from what I understand, matching would probably be in addition to, like say for instance, we'll just make up some number for education work. You receive $2,000, that they're going to match it. So I would say in addition to. Right. So if you spend $2,000 of your education award, um, towards your tuition, that then the university would give you $2,000 towards the tuition as well. So you'd end up with a total of 4000 Yeah. But I, I would still, even though that sounds great, I would still double check with the specific school because I believe that that sounds about right. Okay. Great. Um, let me pause here and see, uh, Aaron, if we have any uh, callers on the phone line. Currently, I show no questions on the audio. Okay, great. We've got a few more here and a little bit more time, so it looks like we may get to all of the questions. Uh, the next one comes from Felicia, and this is a uh, pretty specific question, so we may need to direct her to the hotline or the VMLC for this. But she says, starting with Miracle, this member, and I also have the GI Bill. How do I use GI benefits in concert with the Siegel Education Award, or does one take precedence over the other? I think believe that's that's tricky because um, you don't want to. Yeah, those are two separate entities, different types of financial assistance. Um, I would talk to the school. Well, actually, I would. For your GI Bill, I know there's different requirements and things. Definitely check with that first to make sure that you're not doing anything that may take away from the GI Bill. Um, so I know the education work, you know, for grants and things like that, you know, sometimes, you know, one or the other may impact the other. So I would I would definitely look for the rules and regulations of the GI Bill and then talk to the finance aid office and let them know you have both and to see, you know, how that can go about being used. I'm not. I believe both could be used, but I, I don't want to tell you yes. Um, definitely see w what the requirements are for the GI Bill and how to go about using it, and you know if you're able to use it in addition with other things. Um, but I, w I would definitely talk to the, the financial aid office at the school you're looking into. Yeah, and this is a, a great example of um, where the financial aid officer or counselor is going to become your best friend um, because mm -hmm. they deal with this stuff all the time. They know uh, the ins and outs of these different benefits programs and, and how they can and cannot be used in concert with one another. So um, definitely yeah. great advice. <laughs> okay, so um, we heard a question earlier from Jessica. So she's the one who she had some current loans when she started. Um, so this in turn put them into, uh, into forbearance. Um, now it looks like she's currently in school and she has a new loan. And of course, because she's in school, those new loans are automatically uh, in deferment. Uh, and she tried to put them into forbearance, but she says her forbearance request wasn't rejected, but also it wasn't accepted. Um, she called and was told that the forbearance cannot override the deferment because deferment is the preferred form uh, status of the loan while she's still in school. So she says, 
I want to see if my uh, previous I want to wait, so I just want to be sure that my previous loan interest will all be paid off and to find out whether the current loan interest will also be paid. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I know as far as interest being a, being paid, the loans would have to be in forbearance. I mean, you're already you're still in school, so of course, you know, your loans are going to be deferred because you haven't graduated yet or left school within six months. Um, yeah, that that sounds very tricky. I'm not sure if you talk with your loan lender, but if they've already told you that basically the loans have to, or need to stay in deferment, then then maybe the only option for that. I'm not sure about the interest being paid. I mean, I believe they're still accruing while they're in deferment, but I'm I'm not 100 percent sure. So, yeah, yeah, but I think the bottom line from our perspective is um, the trust will not pay interest on a loan unless that loan is in national service for Baron. Right? Yeah, that sounds right. Like you know, yeah, because I just don't see that happening with deferment. So, yeah, okay. you're right, Andy. Okay. So I think this is going to be our last question. Um, it comes from Crystal, and she says, how does making payments with your education award um, on student loans affect your monthly payment amount? She said, like, for instance, if my monthly payment based on income is, say, $200 a month, if I were to use $2,000 of the award to pay down my balance, would that reduce my monthly payment? Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking that might be a question for the loan lender, um, depending on what your balance is and asking them, you know, if you were to make a certain pay payment amount of a certain amount, with, how would that affect your monthly payment? But I'm not sure it would, but I, I still would talk with them. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would talk with them as well. My guess is that if you're already making um, payments, uh, and the payment amount is based on your income, then paying down the balance probably won't change your monthly payment amount because the monthly amount is set based on your income. What you may want to do instead is use your education award to make those $200 monthly payments each month um, because you've already used income-based repayment uh, or some other form of that to get the payments as low as possible. And then with, you know, $5,775, you can make a lot of monthly payments at $200 a month using your education award. Um, so that's, you know, one strategy to look at. Uh, but to be sure, you might want to talk to your lender and see if, uh, if, in fact, making a lump sum payment to get your balance lower would, um, would, would be better. Um, certainly, if you did that, if you made a lump sum payment, it would reduce the total amount of interest that you'll pay over the life of the loan. So some people, um, you know, they don't want to pay any more interest than they have to, so that is a strategy that works for some. Others, you know, are more concerned about what their monthly payment is and how much they'll have left over after they pay their loan. So um, the different options there are on the, again, the Education Awards site. There are some uh, scenarios there and walks through these different strategies to give you more illustration of how that could work. All right. <clears throat> well, I want to thank all of you for joining us today. And in particular, I want to thank my colleague, uh, Siobhan Walker from the Dismember Support Unit, and Natasha Douglas, also the VMFU. You may have seen uh, Natasha in the Q&A answering your questions online, um, as well to thank um, our operator, Aaron, on the phone. And, um, and both Jeff Knight and Andy Clark, who are uh, with Education Watch West for their production assistance. Um, and I want to invite you back. Our next webinar coming up on January 27th is called Behavioral Economics and Financial Decision Making. We'll have a professor of behavioral economics at the University of Rhode Island, Rhode Island sorry, will be talking about uh, how uh, the field of behavioral economics can apply to anti-poverty work, and we look forward to seeing you then. So thank you all for your participation. Hope to see you again soon.